Hello everyone, we're here with uh, Rick Van Bean, which is in charge of the marketing of uh, Black Desert Online, as you can see there. Oh, that's great, now we got the Peggy. <laughs> that, like a great scene of the game for all the time, and then I get the Peggy, but the Peggy logo. Okay, so anyway, Rick, uh, we, have, we have a quite big booth here at Paris Game Week. So, what do you think of the reception? of uh, the fans. I see that there is a lot of line, a lot of people in line waiting to play. Well, it's a, it's a very, uh, it's, uh, it's quite busy. Uh, we had people in line, uh, yeah, basically all show already. Um, I don't speak French, but people are smiling when they leave the, uh, the play session, so that's, uh, that's positive. People can get a t-shirt as well, maybe that helps, we're bribing them a little bit. Uh, but no, genuinely I think that the reception is very positive and uh, they are really into the game. We only announced uh, that Black Desert Online was coming to the West uh, recently. And uh, yeah, now finally we have our first showing here at Paris Games Week, and um, yeah, it's looking good so far. So, let's go to the elephant in the room immediately. Like, uh, well, it's not an elephant; it's it's a pleasant thing for me. Buy to play. Why? Why this choice? It's a ballsy move. So, why did you did you decide to to do buy, buy to play instead of like pay to play or free to play? Um, yeah, that's a tough question for me to answer, but I'll try to uh, elaborate here. Um, first of all, I think that the, the free-to-play market, uh, especially on MMORPGs, is a very crowded one. Uh, secondly, we believe that Black Desert Online as a game has a, a good enough quality uh, that we can actually ask for money up front. And, um, it will also help to balance the game because we don't have to use free to play, uh, pay to win antics to uh, earn money. So it will actually, the, the business model will actually help the game in becoming a more balanced uh, product than, for instance, the, the game that exists in other territories. Um, our Western version will differ. Uh, in many ways from the versions that are out in other markets and uh, the buy to uh, the buy to play uh, business model will help us uh, yeah really balancing the game so basically once the game will come out hopefully in Q1 uh, next year um, yeah players buy the game once and they can just play it whenever there's no subscription model we do have a cash shop, uh, but that cash shop will uh, mostly only sell vanity items and some convenience items, but nothing that relates to uh, a, pe uh, uh, a pay to win model. Okay, so uh, you say that your, your version will be a little different from the Korean version. So what kind of difference are we talking about? What uh, changes are you looking into making to the game? Um, so what I already explained is that the cash shop will be geared towards uh, vanity items uh, more than anything else. Um, obviously we will make some pricing adjustments because people have already paid up front. And, um, but also in terms of balancing content, the order of content uh, which we will release will be more geared towards the Western market and uh, we feel that's very important um, to adapt the game as good as possible for you know our audience and uh, we're doing that both in terms of gameplay mechanics in-game and balancing but also we uh, pay a lot of attention to the game's localization. Uh, the game will actually be localized in English, German and French and um, yeah, most of the work we're doing is now focused on that and getting the game uh, properly localized uh, in order to uh, release in Q1 of this year. Uh, actually, talking about changes, the original version is known to be quite sexy, like it has a lot of lingerie, underwear, stuff like that. Are you going to keep that? 
I don't know, to be honest. Um, uh, obviously, we will have different uh, clothing in there. Um, as you just saw, we have a 16, 16 plus rating, uh, provisional now on Peggy. Uh, so we can put some adult stuff in there, I think. Uh, but we also, at the same time, we want to avoid uh, certain sorry uh, certain annotations with what is custom for Korean MMOs so we really want to westernize it uh, could well be that we will bring content that will be especially be made for our version and that's how we try to appeal to the Western players more and more uh, so one thing that that's it. when I interviewed the, the Korean team a while ago, they told me that they what they were interested in uh, testing a PS4 version of the game, maybe even Xbox One. Uh, what do you think about that? Would you like to have it for PS4 as well? I would love to have it for PlayStation 4. Um, yeah, that's basically up to the development team, but also from our side to see how well the game. Uh, gains ground in uh, in uh, North America and Europe, where we are publishing the game. Uh, it's not something we're focusing on now. We are focused on the PC version of the game first and foremost. But never say never. Um, but I can't make any promises. So um, yeah, it will be PC only for the time being. And uh, who knows what the future may hold. So what do you think are the like the the strongest uh, elements that can allow Black Desert to be successful in the worldwide, not just uh, in the in Korea like it was. Okay, number one, I think we have the the most intricate, um, detailed character customization model. I think of any game, you can name me any console game or any other MMORPG. Uh, we've got the best. Of any game, I'm uh, positive about that. Also, the combat is very um, lively, action-packed, and also the world is uh, consistent, open. It's an open world, uh, no instances, so you can travel from one side to the other side. Yeah, and graphically, it's phenomenal, I think. So uh, there's a lot there to love. We've got strong uh, player versus the player versus environment content. Very strong PvP end game. We have uh, PvP guild versus guild, castle siege. There is something in BDO for everyone, I think. So I think that those strong points will certainly appeal to the Western player. Okay, one last question. How is it to work with a, a pretty big Korean uh, developer di like Daum? And uh, how big is the development team uh, for the game uh, in Korea? So Pearl Abyss, which is the developer of, uh, of this game, of uh, Black Desert Online, is approximately 100 plus people. Um, Daum Games in Korea is a relatively small uh, publisher. There are also 100 plus people. And uh, for our Western operation, we are now of a team of 15, and we're planning to expand like 20, 25 people in the end of the year. Um, yeah, it's it's been. I've I've only joined the company uh, from the first of October. Uh, it's been a wild ride. From now, had had a lot to. Uh, to arrange uh, but yeah cool bunch of people and uh, hopefully we're gonna be successful with Black Desert Online okay. thank you very much for your time so we're here with Rick Van Bean and Giuseppe Elva signing out with Black Desert Online